two ships. His plan was this. He and most of his army would wait near the riverbank, while some of his men would sail the ships downriver to the Gulf. One ship would then proceed to Havana, Cuba, the other to Panico, Mexico, the northernmost Spanish settlement, in hopes of leading reinforcements back to those who waited by the Mississippi. De Soto's plan was not to be, for on this last leg of the march he had contracted a deadly fever. Our leader confessed his sins, wrote a will, and named his longtime friend and confidant Luis de Moscoso as his successor. Then, on the 21st of May, 1542, Hernando de Soto died. In an effort to conceal de Soto's death from the Indians, we quietly buried him beneath the waters of the great river. Hernando de Soto's plan to continue the quest for gold died with him. In fact, many of his men rejoiced at his death and now had only one goal, to leave this new country as quickly as possible. Fearing a long sea journey back to Cuba or Mexico in small boats, they decided to try an overland route to Panico in northern Mexico. It was a decision that would cost more lives and another half year of torturous marching, all for nothing. After four months, Moscoso realized the entire expedition would soon die in the harsh deserts that lay between them and Mexico. As their fourth winter approached, he decided to retrace their path back to the Mississippi River. After spending another harsh winter along the banks of the Great River, enduring more Indian attacks and a raging flood, the band set about building boats. They realized that the only way out was down the river. They loaded the vessels with fresh water, most of the local corn crop, their last 22 good horses, and a hundred Indian slaves. The rest of the captives were abandoned in an unknown land where the local tribes were hostile toward them. The final leg of our long journey soon became a desperate, violent race to the sea. Indians from villages we passed swarmed after us in canoes, raining arrows down on our heads. Ten more of our men and many of the slaves were killed. In order to speed our journey, we killed our last horses, which lightened our load and provided us enough dried meat for the last weeks of the expedition. After 17 brooding days on the mighty river, we finally reached the Gulf. And on the 10th of September, 1543, the good Lord took pity on us and delivered us into salvation. We finally reached the Spanish settlement at the Panuco River. They had journeyed over 4,000 miles, at one point even coming within 400 miles of Francisco Vasquez de Coronado's expedition, which was being led at the same time through the southwest. Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo was also exploring the California coastline by ship during this time. European competition for this new land was fierce, even among the Spanish themselves. Of the nearly 700 Spaniards who began the journey with De Soto over four years earlier, only 311 survived. The conquistadores had killed or displaced thousands of Indians throughout the southeast, and, like other expeditions, had unknowingly brought diseases to the New World for which local tribes had no natural immunity. And, after all this, the Spaniards had not found even a single ounce of gold, nor established a single permanent settlement. For Spain, Hernando de Soto's exploration was a disappointment. For the native chieftains of the southeast, the expedition was devastating. The most important sources on the La Florida expedition are from accounts published years later by survivors. These accounts outline the natural richness of the land, where nature itself was the greatest treasure, and encouraged future explorers to attempt to settle and colonize. Their description of cultures previously unknown to Europeans gave Renaissance philosophers new food for speculation about the history of mankind. Our quest for new colonies and treasures of gold was a failure. As survivors, we were happy just to escape with our lives. But hopefully others will learn from our mistakes and misfortunes and see the opportunity here for new enterprise and expansion of the empire, for God and King. To this day, the DeSoto expedition is controversial. 
He is thought of by some as a brilliant cavalryman and fighter, and by others as destructive, arrogant, and brutal. What we do know is that the story of Hernando de Soto continues to provide us a unique and valuable insight into the history of America. Thank you.